love, commitment, starting a family. These all seem like very traditional reasons to get married. But did you know that the concept of marrying for love is actually less than 100 years old? And that monogamy took a few centuries to catch on? So what changed? Marriage is what brings us together today. In the Bible, a marriage was defined by a state instituted and ordained by God for the lifelong relationship between one man as husband and one woman as wife. In Mesopotamia, they were a little more pessimistic. They compared marriage to slavery. And in 400 AD, many church officials actually opposed marriage, describing it as bondage. Definitions may have differed, but most civilizations agreed that love shouldn't be involved at all. In ancient Rome, it was believed to be inappropriate for husbands and wives to be in love. The philosopher Seneca said that there was nothing more impure than a man loving his wife like a mistress. Marriage was more often a bargaining tool for families to get what they needed, like land or other resources. Daughters as young as seven could be given away by their fathers, until the 13th century when Pope Alexander IV changed the laws and made marriage a sacrament between two people by taking it out of the hands of parents and putting it into the hands of the two participating and mostly willing parties. It wasn't until the 1920s that people started marrying for love en masse, coining the term love marriage. We are, uh, we're getting married. Who, who is getting married? You and I. You and I are getting married. Yes. We are. But marriage has always meant a long-term monogamous commitment, right? In biblical times, not only was polygamy not illegal, it was considered a man's right to have multiple wives and mistresses. For example, Abraham had two wives and a concubine, Caleb had five, Moses a mere two, but King Solomon had over 1,000, though 300 were considered to be concubines. Arise, my wives, and hear the will of my notion. Monogamy is actually a relatively new Western invention. But what isn't new? Divorce. People have been getting out of their unhappy arrangements for hundreds of years. In early Mesopotamia, Hammurabi's code gave husbands alternate options by stating instances in which they could get a refund on their spouse if they were unhappy. My heart belongs to you, but I will marry Wessex a week from Saturday. Is she fertile? She will breed. If she do not, send her back. Both the Greeks and the Romans allowed divorce as well. Thanks to Henry VIII breaking from the Catholic Church and founding his own church just to marry Anne Boleyn, the people of Britain were forced to be okay with it. By the 1800s, divorce was so common that the U.S. government estimated that by the early 1900s, society was sure that marriage would soon be obsolete. Though the divorce rate increased throughout the 20th century, it started to decline, with 2016 having the lowest American divorces on record since 1980. Well, people had to get married to start families, didn't they? People got married for so many reasons. Because they were lonely, because their family needed a goat, because their parents couldn't afford to feed them any longer, because they needed to strengthen their political position, or because a brother's wife died and he needed a new one. You know, I didn't choose this union either. Then why go through with it? Because it benefits my family, of course. Procreation was often a consequence of being married, but it's been proven that it often wasn't the main goal. In fact, the early Christian church would not dissolve marriages just because a couple couldn't conceive. Traditional marriage hardly sounds ideal, and for the most part, it has changed for the better, especially because women didn't have any rights. During American colonial times, William Blackstone stated that the very existence of a woman is suspended during a marriage, and that she ceased to exist as a person without thought or voice. Since a wife was considered her husband's possession, he could do what he saw fit with her. This often involved keeping her in line through physical means. In his Corpus Juris, Emperor Justinian suggested that it may not be right to beat your wife, but if you happen to see a reason to do it, you would just have to pay her afterwards. Thankfully, by the late 1800s, this practice became more outdated, but it wasn't fully outlawed in the U.S. until 1920. Furthermore, it was only in 1979 when head and master laws were abolished in most states, which stated that a husband could do whatever he wanted with his house, his family, and his wife and her possessions. What will marriage look like in another hundred years? Will it even exist? 